team at the Australian Government Department of Finance. We're responsible for GovCMS. We basically do what Michael was talking about for government. I want to start just by setting a little bit of a scene and, and reflecting on the past two years uh, and what it's meant for GovCMS. Um, we have always had a pretty strong roadmap and things that we wanted to do to evolve the GovCMS uh, program and the, the platform that we're hosting sites on. But during the pandemic, um, we really shifted our focus to, to BAU. Um, rather than picking up things on our roadmap. A few of the things I'll be talking about tonight, uh, we actually had started back in 2019 and early 2020. And for various reasons, we decided eh, we need to stop working this uh, for the time being. And yeah, unfortunately, that's taken two years to get to a point where we're feeling a bit more comfortable now uh, taking that roadmap forward. Um, the stability of the platform uh, was the absolute key thing for us during this time. Um, and also after, you know, 12 months, 18 months of dealing with all things pandemic, there was so much change fatigue going on. Um, the risk of us doing anything substantial was, was quite high. So we decided, uh, you yeah, know, let's just wait it out for a little while. Um, the impact on our BAU was, was pretty significant. We had uh, very good resilience. Uh, we maintain a really good security posture, but you know, as Michael and others will attest to, that takes a lot of work. Uh, and to do it in a way that's kind of, you know, invisible to our end customers while they were managing to keep their own websites up and running from a content point of view uh, was, you know, yeah, quite quite an impact on the team as a whole. We were, we were really risking people burning out. Thankfully, we're coming on the on the other side of that now. BAU does not mean there is no work to do. So I'm just putting this graph up here to put a little bit of context for some of the stuff. Uh, this graph represents the type of activity that the team's gone through over the last couple of years. You can see that really big blip that's yellow. Um, that was our Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 migration um, for the SaaS platform. We had, it was something like 120 sites had to get migrated from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 on our SaaS platform. And of course, we had to have all that done before Drupal 8 went end of life. Oh, and by the way, we still had a pandemic going on at the same time. So that was an interesting project. Uh, the second blip you can see to the far right-hand side of the graph, that's the latest machinery of government changes that we've had to manage with the uh, incoming government. You know, lots of sites getting moved around, agencies getting split apart. And of course, that means they all need new websites or major changes. So a lot of work behind the scenes just to support that transition as well. An interesting reflection that certainly we've seen and perhaps may not be uh, front of mind for a lot of people, citizens' interaction with government has definitely changed over this last two years. Um, the graph that I'm showing here is just for our SaaS platform. We also have a PaaS platform. SaaS is fully managed by the Department of Finance. PaaS, the agencies that are using that, have a bit more flexibility in, in what they run on the platform. Um, it's easier for me to grab the data from the SaaS platform. So that's all I've got here. So ignoring the ridiculous spike that happened back in March of 2020 at the height of the, the pandemic, where we had you know 127 odd million page views hit the platform in a single month, uh, we used to get about 20 million page views a month. Well, we're now hovering around the 40, 42 million page views per month. Uh, in terms of the overall number of sites that GovCMS has got, we haven't really grown that much. There's been a fundamental shift in how citizens interact with government. Um, they had to interact online because there was no other way for them to do it for a fairly significant period of time. That's now translated into maybe a larger part of the community has figured out that actually interacting with government online is one of the ways to get stuff done. So that trend has definitely changed. And that's got implications for all of us that are building sites, managing services, creating and publishing content. We're now putting that in front of more people, which means we have a broader range of people that we might need to provide those services for, and perhaps they haven't been seeing it in the past. We're not expecting this traffic pattern to change in any downwards direction. Um, it's likely to keep gr gradually climbing. Um, quick summary to sort of show you some of the numbers that we're dealing with at the moment. Um, 
this is kind of as at today and some numbers from over the last 12 months or so. Uh, GovCMS hosts uh, more than 340 sites now. Uh, there's another 60, nearly 70 sites in development. They'll go live soon. Some of those are Drupal 7 sites that are shifting to Drupal 9. So it doesn't mean we're going to add another 70 sites completely to our numbers. Uh, as at today, we've got 104 agencies signed up and a few more in the pipeline. We're really happy that over the last two years, we've managed to have a 99.99% platform uptime for editors and publishers. Um, the, the amount of work that the team put in to keep the platform fine-tuned is just phenomenal. Um, the numbers start to get really scary when you start looking at the totals. You know, the SaaS platform over the last year, it's more than a billion page views, that's with a B and more than a petabyte of bandwidth passed through the platform. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the terminology, a petabyte is 1,024 terabytes. So I'm going to focus now on some of the things in our roadmap, the stuff that we are going to be working on in the next 12 months. Uh, it may not be the most technical presentation either, but hopefully it gives you guys some inspiration as to some of the things you might be getting to work on um, in the coming year if you're doing some GovCMS projects. We are already well underway with our roadmap, which is good to see, because like I said, we've, we've kind of stopped for a couple of years. And at the moment, our focus is on DXP, digital experience platforms. Transitioning to Drupal 9, we've still got a few sites that are hosted uh, running Drupal 7. Uh, we've got some program activities that we need to do. Over the course of the financial year that we're in, um, some of you will know that Google is making fairly radical changes to Google Analytics and that there will be a shift to the GA4 platform. That means we've actually got to do some changes behind the scenes, particularly with our Drupal distribution to make sure that it's compatible with the new GA4 platform and that our SaaS customers in particular can still continue to use that tool for tracking usage on their site. The DXP work itself is a fairly complicated procurement that was currently underway. Uh, we are currently at the stage where we've done some proof of concepts. I'll talk about more of that a little bit later. Um, there is a procurement exercise that will create a panel of suppliers that agencies will be able to use. Uh, that should be in place by about the end of the year. Um, those of you that are familiar with GovCMS uh, know that we have a contracted service provider at the moment, that's Salsa Digital and the Amazie team uh, to actually manage the platform on our behalf that contract is up for renewal. Uh, so this year before Christmas, finance needs to approach the market and start a whole tender exercise. That won't be completed until about July next year. And then we'll be transitioning to whatever the outcome of that process is. On top of all of that, we've got our transition to Drupal 10. Again, I'll talk more about that shortly. Uh, we're also doing some really interesting work with, of all things, single sign-on. And the interesting thing for us there is we actually have to integrate with protected government networks. So another layer of complexity on top of what would otherwise be a relatively straightforward exercise. So we're doing some proof of concept work in that space, and hopefully we'll have a working uh, example of that again by the end of the year. As we get out towards the end of the financial year, um, we need to do a refresh of our cybersecurity tools. Uh, so the tools we use won't actually uh, really mentioned by Michael. Um, my comment would be in that mm, sometimes you get what you pay for and the tools aren't necessarily enterprise grade. Um, so you do need to choose and assess carefully to make sure that they're really up to the kind of standards that you would need them to be. So we have a particular set of tools that we're currently using. Early next year, we'll refresh the contract for that. And I'm very interested to see where that lands in terms of what we might be using next year. As we get into a little bit further down the track, we don't know exactly what this is going to look like until the tender process has been completed for the hosting contract. We might, and I have to say might because I don't know, we might end up with a different service provider, in which case there's some transition arrangements will have to happen. We also might end up with some changes to the underlying platform. Um, back in 2018, we were with Acquia for hosting for the GovCMS platform. Um, but the tender responses that came in at that particular exercise led us towards the Kubernetes-based platform 
and Lagoon that we're on today with Salsa Digital and Amazing managing it for us. Um, once we know the outcome of that tender exercise, we'll then know what the impact is on agencies that they may need to migrate or have some other changes done. And certainly we may have to onboard some of the, the technical staff uh, with our new service provider. Uh, we're, until we get to that stage, I really can't fill in the details of then. The new hosting contract has to be in place by 1 November next year. So it will take us about 12 months to get to that point. There are a couple of different places uh, through our roadmap where government agencies and members of the community can potentially get involved in this process. So right now with DXP, we are doing some proof of concept showcases. There's four projects that we're working on uh, with various suppliers, and uh, there will be a community showcase that I'll talk about in a minute. For the Drupal Services panel, this is a group of 17 suppliers at the moment. Some of you in the room may work for companies that are on that panel. Um, there is going to be a refresh of that panel to add some more suppliers. Well, we may need some assistance from there, our community to help with the evaluation of that work. Um, Potentially, there could be some secondments if anyone really is keen to come and work at GovCMS and you're a government employee, um, we could have a chat about what that might look like. I mentioned the single sign-on. Uh, this is one of the foundation enabling pieces that we're looking at. Uh, a number of the agencies that we host sites for have some operational challenges, not necessarily the same as what Michael described, but like, how do you share content with people inside your organization when it's not approved content, but you also don't necessarily have the capacity to add user accounts into your Drupal site, um, surely a single sign-on solution would, would solve that requirement. Now add on to that, you start talking about protected networks. There's a little bit more work to do in that space. For the hosting contract, we are looking for government agencies to help us with things like vendor workshops. The evaluation exercise we know is a fairly big piece of work. Um, last time we did it, it took about three months to finish the evaluation process. Uh, so again, I'll be looking for maybe some secondes to come over and, and work with the GovCMS team for a couple of months while we uh, manage that process. And then again, depending on the outcome of that process, there's probably going to be some requirement for agencies to get involved during the transition. Um, we'll keep information flowing out on that as more information comes to hand. There is some action required that we need agencies to do now. Now, this is probably relevant to you, even if you just work for a supplier, maybe you're a supplier supporting an agency who's got a Drupal 7 website. Um, you really need to start poking them, prodding them, you know, tapping them on the shoulder and asking them what their plans are. We still have about 27 sites that need to migrate away from Drupal 7. And of course, it's now the 1st of September, which means time is running out fast. Our only saving grace at the moment is that most of those projects are underway. But that doesn't mean they're close to finishing and that doesn't mean they're actually going to be able to deliver on time. So this is something that we're watching and monitoring very closely. Um, and I have a few uh, agencies, um, shall I say, on my shit list that uh, need a bit of a talking to so that we can hopefully get them back on track to deliver. Uh, we don't support Drupal 8 anymore, so they're all moving to Drupal 9. And then Drupal 10 starts to become the next interesting challenge for GovCMS. Yep, you're probably all familiar that the Drupal Association pushed out the release date of Drupal 10 to December of this year. Uh, looking at how the core is progressing, it looks like they're going to meet that December timeline. And quite frankly, they don't really have an option because there's too many dependencies that are also becoming end of life. So it's kind of December or nothing. And Michael Richardson has just left the meeting, which means I think I'm not presenting to the room anymore. Keep going, okay. <laughs> All right. So we now have some challenges in the Drupal 10 space and it's all about readiness. So Drupal core is not ready 
yet. Uh, a lot of modules in Contrib world, they're really not ready yet. Um, and that means that we're not going to be ready uh, immediately either. We still have to build the uh, Gun CMS distribution. And the biggest challenge that we have seen so far, and this is something I need you all to take away as a bit of a something to think about, we've done a scan of the existing sites that are sitting on the GovCMS platform. And most of the issues that we are seeing right now for Drupal 10 compatibility relates to deprecated code in site themes. We are working to figure out a way that we may be able to fix some of this uh, in an automated way. Um, talking to our service provider and some of our other technical guys uh, as early as, well, sorry, as late as today, they're hoping they can get maybe 90% of the issues into a state where they can be fixed automatically. But we're suspecting some things are going to need to be fixed manually. And some of our agency site owners are probably not going to have themers or devs on hand to address some of these issues quickly. So this is a challenge that we're going to have to try and figure out a way of getting around that resource problem. The next biggest issue that we've got is that there are a significant number of modules that are not yet stable for Drupal 10. Uh, a lot of work is still in the pipeline. Yep. But we're looking at some of the modules that we currently use in Drupal 9. And well, maybe the maintainers aren't particularly that active. And that's starting to concern us a little bit. If you're in a position that you can make a contribution to push a module along, uh, maybe deal with something in their issue queue, get them a little bit closer to being stable, and you can contribute some time to that, that would be fantastic. Maybe we need to organize a code sprint, and that could be something that I could potentially sponsor with some caffeine and pizza, uh, because put a few heads together, we might be able to smash through some of this work. Now, code sprints are already going on but maybe we need to have a slightly more focused code sprint around some of the things that we need to be looking at for GovCMS. So I'm trying to figure out what that might look like as well. We know that one of the options that finance or, or GovCMS has got is to potentially take on the maintainer status of a module or maybe fork a module uh, and create our own instance of it. But there are consequences for that option because then who looks after it long-term? Um, it's not the kind of path I would want to take, but we may need to in a couple of places, uh, particularly where some of the security modules are at play. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, I think Yvonne's in the room. She can scream at me if I'm saying this all wrong, but I think the two-factor authentication module is one of the modules that's not yet Drupal 10 compatible. And like for us, that's just not negotiable. We have to have that module. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get that module ready for Drupal 10. Hopefully, the maintainer will actually you know, come along and, and do their thing. But if I have to fork that module so that I can do the work myself, we will. The other option that we've got, um, I won't call it the nuclear option, but it's pretty severe. Um, if it's a less popular module, we may actually remove it from our distro. And that means a site running on our SaaS platform won't be able to run that module. If they're on the PaaS platform, they will be able to run a module that's perhaps not quite ready to the same standard that we would uh, run on the SaaS platform, but then they have the consequences of maintaining their code base as a whole. So again, not necessarily a direction that we would want to go in. DXP, a little bit more about what we're currently doing and what we're planning. Interestingly, uh, it was before Christmas last year, uh, GovCMS got in touch with a whole range of our existing customers and we had a conversation with them about what does DXP mean? And I probably asked about 10 different agencies and I got about 14 different answers. It really means different things to different people. That's been our takeaway. No one really understands what it means. The way we're looking at it is it's all about enabling a much richer content experience for users where you've got personalized content, where you've got content that adapts to something that you know about the user. It's tools that enable reuse, syndication, sharing of content. Uh, it's to create and manage a single source of truth 
a lot of the agencies we're talking to recently say that that's their biggest pain. They have content that they've very carefully created and curated to publish on their site. Someone else, also from government perhaps, comes along and copies the content from their site and pastes it onto their own website because they want to be helpful and useful to the users of their site. But that means when the original content gets updated, you've now got a content synchronization issue because they don't go back and recopy and repaste it back into their own site. We've seen some interesting side effects of that. Um, some of the bigger agencies, and I won't say who, but some of the bigger agencies drive content towards their online channels for good reason, because operating their call centers can be very resource draining and it turns out to be very expensive. Well, what happens if you get another website that is using more or less the same content, but they don't include the links to the online transactional services. They only provide the phone number to the contact center. Kind of undermines all the effort the agency's gone to to create that really sort of uh, crafted content experience to guide people into the online channel. So we've got some proof of concepts underway in this space. There's going to be a community showcase on the 16th of September. Um, you can, I haven't actually got the link here. I should have done that. Um, I can get the link circulated around. Uh, people can register to join. It will be an online event uh, and you'll get to see four projects from four different vendors. The session will take about two and a half hours in total to get through. Each of the vendors is showing a slightly different approach to a slightly different problem. So they're not all talking about the same thing. And we're hoping that this inspires some conversation and some, hmm, what if we could do something like that kind of conversations with site owners. Uh, I'm sure some of you will also appreciate the, hmm, how would I actually make use of that? Maybe a project that you're working on. The end goal of this work is to have a panel of suppliers in place by the end of 2022. So I mentioned at the start of my chat that we're doing a refresh of the Drupal services panel. That's a separate exercise but this panel of suppliers effectively will be through that same process. It'll be a different, um, think of it as a chapter in the price book. And if you wanna come and buy some of this software or engage some of the services from these suppliers, uh, basically the procurement process becomes a whole lot easier. GovCMS is also looking at what a whole of platform solution might look like, potentially a whole of government solution. We host a vast amount of government content already. We've got 340 odd sites. Um, some of those sites, I will name drop Services Australia. Um, they are one of the biggest sites in terms of traffic that the government has. Uh, and our total platform traffic is larger than the top four Australian banks combined. So in terms of the footprint for Australian government, we don't host everything, but we host a pretty big amount of it. So maybe a whole of platform solution actually creates some very interesting opportunities for sharing content and creating better experiences. We expect to start off small. There is a lot that the GovCMS team doesn't really know about DXP. None of us have done it at scale before. You know, I've been doing government stuff for, for the better part of 25, 26 years. I've done some stuff with what you would call DXP, but not at scale and certainly not with the tools that are available today. So there'll be a bit of a learning exercise, but maybe in the next year or two, there could be something a bit more substantial. So yeah, we'll crawl, then we'll walk, then we'll run. Government as a whole has also got a whole lot to learn about what DXP means and how to implement it. To be honest, the technology uh, is going to be the easy bit. Um, most government agencies have not done the upfront design and user research that would be required to build the kind of experiences that their citizens actually need. You know, they haven't done the segmentation to understand their users yet. They couldn't probably even describe the kind of outcomes that they're looking for from a better experience. So that's where a lot of the work needs to be done in that kind of crawl stage while we figure some of this out. 
The key thing people do need to keep in the back of their mind, though, is that for us, GovCMS and Drupal is going to be still the core of whatever platform that we provide, and that is not negotiable. It's absolutely essential that government maintains ownership of the content management component. It's essential that that CMS is open source because it means that government can modify those tools to meet the somewhat peculiar requirements that government has. The DXP tools we're looking to integrate with may be a mixture of open source or proprietary. They're likely to be hosted off the GovCMS platform. There might be a few things that could be hosted on the GovCMS platform at some point. We haven't quite figured some of that out yet either. But it does mean there's some interesting opportunities on the horizon, and that may lead to some interesting projects that you guys get to work on as well. If you would like to know more about any of this, these are the ways that you can get hold of the team or me. Um, come to our website, chuck us an email. If you are a government employee, you have access to Gov Teams, you can find me there. And if you are a social media freak, you can find me on Twitter. That's me. Questions, conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, I have to very carefully manage the mute and the mute button on two devices. So uh, just very quickly, does anyone have any questions for Nathan? Uh, just before questions, um, myself, Alistair, and Vaughn from GovCMS are here tonight. So if you want to come and have a guess with us about anything as well, feel free to use us while we're here. Wonderful. Thank you. It looks like no questions. All good. All right. Thank you very, very much, Nathan. Wonderful Thanks. to have you join us. And uh, I'm gutted I, I couldn't be um, there in, in person, but uh, sorry, I'm off. One second. I'm, I'm gutted I couldn't be there in person, but I'm off to Newcastle on the weekend to visit my brand new grand nephew who was born two weeks ago. So I'm isolating at the moment. <laughs> you just had one a little while ago. <laughs> I know, this is number two. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Yes, as as far as excuses go, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, well done. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, all right, I think that's that's basically a wrap. Uh, I wanted to ask a couple of little housekeeping questions. I mentioned earlier we're looking at doing this probably monthly or bi-monthly moving forward. We'll skip October because we've got Drupal South. Uh, really quickly, show of hands, who is going to Drupal South or, or thinks that they'll go to Drupal South? Fantastic, that's like half of you. That's so cool. <laughs> um.